Good day, my I Choose Shakers and Movers. How y'all doing out there? I hope that you're well. It's been a while. Listen, I'm in between sessions and I, as always, have been thinking about you. I know I haven't posted in a while, but I had a conversation with someone and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to share this with my I Choose community. And I'm hoping that this is gonna help someone. So it'll be very, very quick. This is about relationships. And um, the the issue that we get into, I remember many years ago, I was sitting at a ministry and um, this pastor was talking about these different issues and he had all of us to say issues really slow. And so when you slow it down really, really slow, it's, it's you. And so anytime that there is an issue, I can almost guarantee you that the issue is starting with you. So it's things you gotta look at. Now, if you are a subscriber and you're a part of this community, you know in previous videos, I've talked about the difference between a good manager and a great manager. Just a quick recap, a good manager is able to see everyone else, but can't see themselves. A great manager is able to see everyone else and themselves, right? So that makes us a great uh, manager because we're gonna deal with the issues. Remember that word issues, that means it's an indication, it's you. We're gonna deal with those things before we deal with anything external. So that was your recap. So quickly to this quick topic on relationships. Why are, and I'm gonna speak about women, even though this isn't a gender specific thing because this can go both ways, men and women, but just for the sake of time, because I do have a, a session to get back to um, or to get to. So for when women get into relationships, they get into these relationships and they're so giddy and they're excited and oh girl, he's the one and bop, bop, bop. And so they go right into uh, a relationship and now we have titles and I'm your girlfriend and you're my boyfriend and whatever. Okay. So then they go from that to possibly engage, possibly marry, and some of them don't even get to the marriage, but they're just in a very long term relationship. Now, the woman goes from being very excited and happy and giddy like a high schooler to very upset, angry, irritated, and she has resentment. What happened between that time? I'm going to tell you. I need you guys to listen. Grab your pen. Um, society tell us that judgment is, ooh, that's a no-no. And for believers such as myself, if you look in the Bible, it also tells you it's a no-no. But here is the problem. We're not maliciously judging. We are judging righteously. So before you could um, get to the point of judging in a relationship when you're seeing someone, you have to observe them first, right? You have to literally observe. And observation, if we think about observation, is just pretty much is, is observing the actions and the process in how someone deals with different things, right? So once you observe, now you need to make a judgment. We're not talking about a malicious judgment. We're not talking about an unrighteous judgment. But the purpose of the observation is to gather the data of what you're seeing and how they're handling things and to make a judgment call. So now the judgment is really the ability to consider the decisions that you have to make about this person being in your space. Are you with me? Okay, so now that we're on the same page about judgment, it is okay to make a judgment call, right? We're, we're on the same page, good. We're not talking malicious or unrighteous. Okay, back to the relationship. So when a woman gets into a relationship, okay, I'm gonna bridge something really quick because y'all know I like analogies. So if you think about someone who is getting ready to run uh, a race with the hurdles, okay? In the beginning, before they do that, they're really not in shape or qualified to do it yet because there's techniques in running a certain speed and jumping a hurdle, running a certain speed and jumping a hurdle, right? So there has to be training that happens. So they have to train their minds. They have to train their bodies. It's a lot of training that goes into it in order to be qualified to run this race, okay? So they want to run this race. They, there's all kind of races they can run, but they want this race that causes them to have to jump hurdles. Why? Because they want the reward at the end. They know there's a great reward at the end. They want the title, they want the reward, they want all that. 
So they are going to train. Here's what women do. They meet a man, right? And the man is doing very good, right? And she knows that her expectations are here. And then she look at him. And if you're an empath, like most of us, you go, mm, you start making excuses and reasons of why he wouldn't quite be able to jump that hurdle. So we do this. I think that's good for him. So now this man, you cut him in his training. He's not doing his physical training. He's not doing his spiritual training. He's not doing his mental training in order to jump the initial hurdle because you have lowered it. So now all he has to do is semi-training and jump this hurdle to get to you. So let's think about positions. So prior to him, you had a position, right? You're the catch. You're the hot commodity. That's your position. All you need to do is just wait to be caught. But you move out of that position of being the catch and you move into the position of being his kindergarten teacher. Yeah, I said it. Now you're his kindergarten teacher. You wanna give me your hand, baby. You wanna put the paint on. You wanna press his hands down to make the, the thing on the paper. So now this man, didn't even know that he was capable of jumping this because you lowered it. So now what he worked for is what he, I mean, that's the best he feels that he can do because he made it over, right? So now you're in another position that you wasn't called to be in. Now you're the kindergarten teacher. Okay. So relationship goal is getting good, but now you're getting frustrated. Why you're frustrated? You're getting frustrated because now you got to teach him this and you got to talk to him like this. And now you feel like you got another child in the house and bop, 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 bop. Now we have an issue. At the beginning of the video, I told you if you say issue real slow, it's you, right? So now I want you to move into a great manager. I want you to see you. What have you done that created this type of relationship? Well, you cut his ability to work out in all the areas he need to work out in order to get you. You moved out of the hot commodity. You moved into a position of pre-K teacher. So now this is what he knows. You did that. So now you have to lie in the bed that you created. So now you're resentful because now, once he's jumped over, you're in a relationship. You got him now, girl. Your, expect, your bar is back up here. Well, how did it get there? Because that's where it was supposed to be all alone. Initially, that's where it was supposed to be, but your fast tail pulled it down. Yeah, I said it. You pulled it down. So now it's back up here, and you're neck deep in a relationship, and you're looking at him sideways like, I don't understand why you... I mean, you've been with me long enough to know me. Why are you not doing this? Why are you not doing that? And he's looking at you saying, but yeah, I know you, but I, listen, the brother don't know how to get up there because you took his training away. You told him he didn't need to work out anymore. You told him he didn't need to exercise with that kind of intensity anymore. Why? Because you lowered it a few years ago. Remember? And now it's back up here, right? So I'm saying this with such passion. You know why I'm saying this with such passion? Because this was my issue. Uh-oh, that's that word again. That meant Miss B had this issue. I had to stop and go, what have I done? I've taken my husband's ability away. And so now I got to figure out a way to get him back in training mode to reach that area, right? So I can speak for myself, you know? I, 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 was, I was the nurse. I wanted to just, and, and, and I was the, what do you call those ladies who come in and clean? I, I was the maid, I, but I enjoyed doing that. But now I'm in a position where I'm just so busy, I don't wanna do it. And so guess what? My king expects that because 
he never lowered his expectation. I did. Right? So the beautiful thing about my relationship is now we're at a place where we're able to talk about it and come to, you know, because we've been together for so long. But I just wanted to put my business out there to let you know you're not alone in this issue. And so there is a way to manage it to get it back to where it needs to be. So someone asked me a question. She said, well, how would they know if they're able to even work that hard? Easy. If this is your question, how would a man know that he's supposed to work that hard? I'll take this. I'm a licensed mental health therapist, right? Being a licensed mental health therapist is not accessible to me unless I have a master's degree, minimum, unless prior to getting a master's degree, I have two years of hands-on experience. After getting a master's degree, I have to take a statewide check, uh, a test and pass. After that, I still have to have more hands-on experience. So I can't even get to being a licensed mental health therapist and I will know I can't because it will not be accessible if I have a bachelor's degree. What am I saying to you guys? That we need to stop making ourselves so accessible. If you're not accessible, they know that they need to do a little extra in order to get you. I hope that makes sense. I know this was a lot and I want to hurry up and do it because I do have a client. Listen, my I choose shakers and movers, y'all know what we do around these parts in this community. We stay free.